What's up, players? My Detroit players. Welcome back. Glad to see you here. I love all of you dearly and deeply and intimately. And just a quick announcement, my most recent podcast episode went up on SoundCloud uh, yesterday, I think. So check it out. The link is in the description below. Open-mindedness. What the crap? One of my commenters recently left a comment that said something about have an open mind, but don't let your brain spill out. For a long time, I didn't understand what open-minded, uh, the open-mindedness, uh, I couldn't even say it for the first 25 years of my life. But I didn't understand what open-mindedness was. I thought it was kind of just like you're willing to give up what you believe at a moment's notice, or like you don't have opinions. You're just kind of like a flag fluttering in the breeze and you go with whatever people tell you to think. And you know, it's funny because open-mindedness is touted as some huge virtue a lot of times, and yet I don't think that there are really many genuinely open-minded people in the world, at least that I've ever met. I think most people are fairly closed-minded, and the people who say they're open-minded are only like relatively open-minded compared to like, I don't know, their grandparents or something. I think for a lot of people also, their definition of open-mindedness means give up what you think and agree with me. Hey man, you're being so closed-minded. You're not agreeing with me. You're just a closed-minded person. You suck. Why can't you be this virtuous, open-minded person like me and believe the things I believe? There was actually a period of time, relatively recently, where I would just say to people bluntly, I'm closed-minded. Like, like on a first date, I would be just, this is who I am, I'm closed-minded. I'm not gonna change anything that I think. Because I didn't think that it was possible. I actually got to a point where I thought open-mindedness did not really exist. It was just something that people use to make you feel bad about disagreeing with them. And I just figured, look, I have opinions and I'm not gonna be a jerk about it, but the opinions are never gonna change, so I'm closed-minded. Cool. You, you cool with that? You're closed-minded too. That was sort of my attitude. Now, I think I'm starting to finally realize, it's dawning on me, what open-mindedness, true open-mindedness is. Now you can be open-minded and still be very opinionated. It's not, it doesn't mean that you don't have opinions. Being open-minded is kind of a more subtle thing. What I think, if you, if you want to take it and put it into a pithy statement, I think being open-minded is being willing to be wrong. That's really all it is. And I know a lot of you are gonna buck at that just because it's like, well, what about these things that I believe very deeply? Am I supposed to, if someone comes along and says, the sky is red, am I supposed to be willing to be wrong about that? Let's take a step back. I think part of it also is we become very attached to our beliefs and we tend to incorporate our beliefs into our identity. And so when someone comes along with the opposite belief, with a belief that is diametrically opposed to how we see reality, and this could be something as big as like religion, politics, or it could be something small like, you know, that recent uh, viral thing where some people hear Laurel and some people hear Yanni. It's like they take it as a threat to their identity, their very existence that you hold the exact opposite opinion or the other way around. It's very threatening to you when someone basically views the world in such a way that it invalidates your opinion if they're right. So much of this comes from kind of this idea of, I don't know where it comes from. I'm, tr I'm treading in dangerous waters here because I really don't want to get into politics or religion in this video, but it seems like we get into this mindset, especially when it comes to things like politics, religion, where it's a zero-sum game, which I guess to a degree makes sense, meaning two viewpoints can't be right. So that means my, my viewpoint has to be right because if the person who thinks the exact opposite of me is right, then that means my, my opinion is wrong. You can't just have two opinions, right? And that gets everyone angry and flustered and stuff. And it makes people like dismissive of people who disagree with them. So for me, what I'm trying to do is to be less and less identified with my beliefs. Like the beliefs that I have, yeah, I have them. They're, they are uh, part of me, but they are not me. 
uh, in many ways, where did my beliefs come from? Well, they came from other people. I didn't really choose the beliefs that came to me or what felt right to believe in the moment. A lot of these things, there's a lot of things in life, your religion, your political orientation, all kinds of stuff that seem to me, from my opinion, <laughs> my opinion is that a lot of those things are, are not determined by you at all. They just show up based on the circumstances of your life. So it's kind of absurd to identify with them because they're not you. They're just ideas. Did you come up with the ideas? I think the best you can say is that you took a bunch of ideas that weren't yours and arranged them in a unique way. But has any of us really come up with a unique idea that was us? I don't know. Especially when it comes to beliefs. Of course not. Like, did you come up with some new, uh, innovative uh, political belief, I somehow doubt it. You're just, you heard someone else say something and you said, oh, I'll believe that. Maybe it wasn't conscious, but that's what happened. So when you start to extricate your identity from your beliefs, you can still have the beliefs, you can still have the opinions, but you're no longer like clinging to them because it doesn't matter. If the beliefs get proved wrong, proved, I mean, a lot of these things can't be proved, but if you're wrong in your belief, it doesn't affect your identity anymore. Whereas if if this belief is a core part of who you are and it's wrong, then who are you? You you have to you basically go through an ego death and have to start over again because this this thing that really isn't part of your identity, you've made it part of your identity. Now a lot of people are going to be like, especially when it comes to religion, they're going to be like, "Look, my faith is very important to me. It is part of who I am." And that is a point that I did not think through before I started this video. But this is not within the scope of this video, but there is a difference between beliefs that are these things that you have to grab onto and like force it into part of your identity and then faith, which is sort of this, you know, this trust fall, this letting go and admitting that you don't know anything. You know, I think faith because of the way language is, faith and belief are almost synonyms, but there is kind of a difference. And I want to make another video about that sometime, or maybe even a podcast, talk about it at length. How beliefs are uh, very much of a, a clinging thing, and faith is a very much letting go thing. And you can have a faith in a you know traditional religion or whatever, and have it be like a real faith that isn't clinging. It's not like, it's not part of your identity. And so you're open to it being wrong. And in many ways, isn't that a stronger faith if you're open to it being wrong? If you're not open to something being wrong, this is really just going to the religious territory. But if you're like, no, this is true. This has to be true. I'm not even going to entertain that it could be wrong. Is it faith at that point? Or is it just uh, this stubborn belief. Uh, just some food for thought. And this, this is the kind of thing, going into any situation, let's bring it down to small, like you're having an argument with uh, your mother or something like that, that uh, if you are truly open-minded and you're willing to be wrong, then suddenly the conflict gets diffused. Now, doesn't it? Because a lot of times when you get in arguments with people, you're trying to prove them wrong. Or, and what a lot of people do in debates and things, which is not good, is instead of actually listening to the ideas that the other person has and actually admitting that, okay, we have irreconcilable um, things that we believe, instead you try to make the other person feel stupid for believing it. You like try to catch them in some kind of logical fallacy that they have. You know, you try to lead them into a corner and then, oop, checkmate, got you, buddy. You're an idiot. And guess what? When you do that to the other person, if they're clinging on to that belief, you're not going to convince them by making them feel like an idiot. They're just going to hold on to it even more. Like, if someone makes you feel like an idiot, are you going to suddenly say, oh, you're right, I'm an atheist now, you know? <laughs> no, that's not how it works. And so, if people were just open-minded, 
if people were truly open-minded, they could have discussions where they have totally diametrically opposed opinions, beliefs, and just talk about it because they'd both be willing to be wrong. Their identity isn't wrapped up in it. And then they could come away from it still believing the same things they did going into it. You know, you, you don't need to shift your opinion constantly in order to be open-minded. You could, you could keep the same opinions for your whole life and still be open-minded as long as you're not going into it with this fearful kind of thing. When you're open-minded, you're not afraid of your opinions being proved wrong because they're not part of you. It's like, oh, okay, well, that was wrong. You know, instead of being like, oh, no, that was, that was the opinion of such a part of me, man. That was gone. Like, no. And it's not easy. Like, I am not, I'm not this paragon of open-mindedness yet because I still have a lot of beliefs that I have associated just with my identity. And you don't even recognize them all until that moment when someone opposes it and you feel, like, physically threatened by it. Have you ever felt that, like... That's why people get so heated with po with politics and religion because they feel like they they are being threatened and in a way they are their identity is being threatened because these beliefs are so incorporated into who they think they are that if this other person is going after what they believe dude that's like trying to kill them because you're trying to kill a part of their ego and Maybe that's also part of being open-minded, is recognizing that even if someone has this belief that you find kind of weird and uh, crazy or, and opposed to what you think, realize that uh, you're trying to kill them if, if you're like really going after what they believe. Now, Frank, you're, what are you telling me? That I can't have a debate, that I can't go after people? you know, that I can't be intellectually honest and open and direct and, you know, have my own opinions. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, yeah, debate things. But don't do it from this perspective of trying to catch people, trying to be like, gotcha, trying to basically kill them if they are so identified with it. It's much more useful if you disagree with someone to have a discussion where you're both looking at these ideas it's like, here's you guys, and then you're looking at these ideas in between you. It's not like the idea is within me, and now we're fighting, and the idea dies with me, man, or I die with my idea. No. Be, uh, you need to be a little bit detached, maybe, is what open-mindedness is. It's very interesting. It's a very interesting thing, and I truly believe that most people are not open-minded in any way even if they say they are. And like I say, be open-minded, have strong beliefs, know who you are, and realize that you are not your beliefs. Maybe if I look at the camera enough like this, my point will go across. Tell me what you think about this. Do you consider my definition of open-mindedness to be accurate? Do you think it's something else? Do you consider yourself to be open-minded? Do you think anyone is capable of being open-minded? If you have an alternate description of what open-mindedness is, let me know in the comments. And I would appreciate, I know in advance, <laughs> the huge irony would be if the comments turn into a big bloodbath of people trying to <laughs> prove their opinions about stuff. But I trust you guys. You guys are, are cool and level-headed, right? I think. Anyway, I love you all. You're the bestest. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, subscribe because I post videos on Friday, Sunday, and Tuesday. Hit the subscribe button a few times for good luck. And I'll see you here again shortly. All right, y'all take care. I need to mention Starbucks as an obligatory thing uh, <laughs> or else you'll call me out on it. Peace. I'll see you next time.